Hello, and welcome to this edition of the Lynn Hayes Freeman Show. Oh my goodness, there's been so much going on in the news in the last week. Sometimes you just have to kind of take a deep breath. You got to decompress. Uh, but there's still issues that we have to talk about. And the issue of organ transplantation continues to be a huge problem in our community, but it doesn't have to be. In fact, there are a couple of different perspectives that we need to look at this conversation from. That's exactly what we're gonna do today on the show. Joining me today, three guests, three different perspectives. Bill Strickland, everybody in town knows Bill Strickland. But what you may not know about Bill Strickland is that uh, four years ago, near approaching five years ago, Bill Strickland had a double lung transplant. We're gonna get his story. Dr. Velma Scantleberry White, is a kidney transplant surgeon. I remember when she was okay. here at UPMC doing just that. We're gonna get her story. And Marisol, uh, let me see, I got Marisol. I wanna make sure I pronounce your name right, and I have a feeling I'm not, but it is Marisol Ferrandez-Williams. Yes. <laughs> is a, a mother who made the difficult decision to donate not one, not two, but five of her 14-year-old daughter's organs. They all share their stories as we look at National Donor oh, Minority Donor <laughs> Awareness Month. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah. Marisol, I want to start with you because in a lot of ways, I feel like your story, you had the hardest decision to make in many ways. When you were approached about donating your daughter's organs, you mentioned, I mentioned she was 14 and a half, Tell us, tell us a little bit about your daughter. Tell us her name, how it was that you ended up in that situation that day. My daughter's name is Janelle Jasmine. Um, she was 14 and a half and uh, I took her to the beach and um, she was with her friends and uh, suddenly uh, she called me that they have to leave and um, uh, her best friend's um, brother he had to go in and he had to take them. And I wanted to come back and I told her to stay there and happened to, everything happened so fast. He said, I'll meet you at her house. And they go into a car accident. He died instantly and my daughter died the next day. She was in a ventilator. Um, she had broken legs, a splint that was bleeding, but the most one was the brain. She hit her head when um, the car crashed in front of another truck. And um, when she got there to the, she was unconscious. So when I got there, I couldn't even speak to her. Wow. Everything just happened so fast. They told me that we have to wait 24, 40 hours to see if she's gonna you know, react. Um, so they had on a ventilator for one day and the next day they did all kinds of tests. Um, uh, they said to me, we're going to do one more test and we're going to see. And then they took her to another room. And when they came back, they said, she's gone. And I had a minute there to just react to what just happened. I was just talking to her the day before and all this happened so fast. So. It was hard. It's yeah. still hard. It's been 13 years. Um, I'm doing better than what I was doing, but uh, when she was there in the bed with the ventilator and her, she was still breathing. Um, they kept her in that because just in case I was going to donate her organs, and I didn't know that they were doing that. I, it was a surprise to me. I was never aware that they were ever going to ask me such a question like that. Mm -hmm. And at that time when, when they told me that she's gone. And so I didn't have enough time to digest all that information, but they were outside waiting for me to see if I will react and it will, you know, they will ask me that question on the right time. Mm -hmm. and so they came in, um, my ex-sister-in-law, Barbara, she was with me at the time. And I was holding the hand when this guy came and we were praying. 
And then he came and he said, I know this is a difficult time. Um, we'd like to ask you, there are some people that waiting for organs and I know this is a hard question, but we would like to know uh, if you will donate some of her organs. Let me I stop you right there. Let me just stop you right there. Only because Dr. Stantleberry White, I want to get you to weigh in because people hear this. People have seen movies and they process all of this. And sometimes it, it feels like it happens fast. It's not, uh, people feel like, oh, it's so intrusive. But <clears throat> time is of the essence in these situations, which is why it's important that we have these conversations now. We think about these things now. Is it not? Absolutely. Because as you said, while you're on, her loved one, her daughter was on life support in terms of being connected to a ventilator, mechanical support that allows for the heart and the lungs to continue to work. There's no, there's no blood flow to the brain. And so there's brain death. And so once brain death occurs, it's only a matter of time before the signals to the rest of the body stop being sent to in order to to continue breathing or have the heart breathing on the machine or have the heart help you. So you're not necessarily breathing on your own. You're breathing because you're having mechanical support that delivering oxygen and air to your lungs and bringing it out. So you're dependent on the ventilator uh, and the heart is still beating because the heart responds to oxygen and blood flow to it. But there's no, this in theory, brain death has occurred in that there's no more signals to the brain. Uh, if you do a brain scan or EEG, you pretty much have no activity going on there. So that's, that's where you have brain death in the sense that now you, the rest of the organs will over time start to not receive signals uh, and sooner or, later, sooner or later they become unstable and can become so unstable that donation either cannot occur or they will just go on to die um, they will just go on to deteriorate because they're already brain dead. They just go on to have those organs cease functioning. Mm -hmm. And Bill, I, I want to get you in before we take this commercial break. While they're saying to Marisol, there are people who may need these organs on the other side of that spectrum. That's where you were, not necessarily in her direct case, but that's where you were. You were one of those people who was in need of a double lung transplant. So you would have been one of those people yes. waiting for word, waiting for the call from a doctor that lungs had been located. I got lucky. Uh, God looked out for me. And uh, on the other side of the community or the city or the state, there was a family that made that decision on my behalf. Mm -hmm. And so I was in the right place at the right time with the right problem. And so through Providence, uh, I was fortunate enough to receive the gift of life. Three, three different perspectives. We'll take a commercial break. When we come back, we're gonna continue the story. It doesn't seem like these all fit together, but it's amazing how they do it. And that's exactly what we're talking about. And we're gonna give you a phone number where you can get more information as well. So stick around. Show continues.